wonderful. Um, now I am going to flip over to our um, very own Eddie Flores. He joined APRO in 2022, and he is our one and only data analyst. Um, Eddie graduated from the University of Texas. He has degrees in economics and government, and he does all things data for APRO. In his free time, he loves his cats, he loves rock climbing, and he loves eating pizza. Eddie's gonna share some data tips with us. So Eddie, please take it away. Thank you, Jen, appreciate it. Um, I think my first tip and perhaps most important tip is to have strong passwords. As obvious and intuitive as it sounds, a lot of people have lax passwords, which leave them vulnerable to attacks from hackers or some malicious entity. And a good rule of thumb is to have at least a minimum length of 12 characters within your password, because not only is a long password strong, but it also takes a lot longer for hackers to guess it correctly. But in addition to making it long, you also want to have a diverse set of upper and lowercase characters, as well as numbers and symbols, something that will really uh, push the amount of time it would take for hackers to guess it correctly. As you can see in this graphic, uh, the longer and the more diverse uh, the, the password is, well, no one's going to crack a password in 1.2 million years, at least not in our lifetimes. Uh, now, transition, I'd like to push a poll to y'all. Um, out of curiosity, what is your longest password in length? So i just like to know real quickly, is your longest password about 10 characters long, 12, maybe 16? Pop up. Okay. All right. And now to transition to this next slide, we're going to talk about password managers. These are great tools to keep up with the amount of passwords and the numerous accounts to different uh, websites you might have. And we here at April, we personally use Zoho Vault. Zoho Vault comes with a password generator as well as uh, storing all the passwords and automatically updating your passwords should we change a password for a website. So not only do uh, does it keep track of all this, but it just has all of our passwords encrypted so hackers can't get into it as easily. Um, and it's really important to update your passwords and to keep them fresh because there are database breaches and leaks. And so it could be the case that your password is a part of it. And so you want to frequently make sure that your passwords are updated. And now we're going to transition to a whiteboard real quick because we want to do a quick little password practice just to show you all a little fun way of making up your own password. So an easy uh, tip for this is to think of a fun phrase or anything really. So one that I can think of off the top of my head is, well, let's say my name is Eddie Flores and I work at a pro and I a great job. So we can see that this is a pretty long sentence, but a great little hack is to take the first letter of every word. So my name is, and then capitalize my name, EF, and I work at APRO, and I have a great job, exclamation mark. So all I did there was take an easy phrase or sentence, and I created a very complex password out of it with all the requisites upper lowercase letters, symbols, and let's just add a nice one degree <laughs> for that. Um, great. And now we're going to go ahead and transition to another little pop quiz exercise over some phishing emails. So for this spooky meal, guys, we want to really test your attention to detail. So there should be about four red flags that jump out to you. So if you could in the chat, just uh, place a response about which four details you think uh, are really uh, the details that really let you know that's a phishing scheme or a phishing email. So I'll give you guys about a good minute to just place your responses in the chat. 
Thank you, Eddie. I love your password tips. I think everybody did. And we were so impressed by Tyler and William. Jamie is uh, complimenting you on your security <laughs> efforts there. But yeah, how many, we're looking for at least four errors in this spooky email, right, Eddie? Yes, at least four. If you could find bonus ones that even we can see, we'll be very impressed and <laughs> yeah, quite fantastic. Perfect. Okay, great. I see Paul's coming in with a few things. Uh, come on, everybody. Let's get in that chat. Let's see. What, I know there's a couple obvious ones here. And it's okay to collaborate. It's always a, a group job to make sure that nobody gets fished. Okay. All right. You guys are really, okay, now it's really starting to pour. You guys are really hitting it on the head for what's wrong with this kind of email. So, yeah, a lot of you guys really got it right away. As you can tell, uh, Jen's last name does not have two E's, so that's already a red flag. The subject line as well, it's really pushing you and really trying to grab your attention to take action now and think later. And thirdly, the grammar. Uh, Jen Stoppelganger might not have the best grammar skills, but I know for a fact that Jen has very great grammar. And so you can kind of tell that with like the missing articles that there's a little bit suspicious about this email. And lastly, clicking on an unknown hyperlink. That is probably the biggest red flag of them all. So it's always great, as mentioned before, to just double check, give a call if you're unsure about an email and just confirm that you are not at risk. So yeah, guys, a great job by everyone on this email. Absolutely. We have some rock stars here today. It's just 